Very interesting tip. I think this this one definitely is more for the introverts, you know, uh, for those of you who don't like being around people. Um, I recommend you to, to, I challenge you to think about this. What is the difference between loneliness and solitude, right? Do you know the difference between loneliness and solitude? I do actually. I do get lonely too. I Well, most of the time I'm just like, you can also kind of use this tip basically to just help them read emotions with themselves and as well as others. Mm -hmm. I think it's also a pretty fun tip too. Yeah. Is he mad? Have this conversation. That's the key here. Yep. Parents, make that time available for your kids to talk to you. Okay? Don't let them bottleneck their emotions and then they have to process it somewhere, somewhere else. And, and Lord knows where that ends up. Hi hey everybody, what's going, going on? on? So in today's video, I'm going to be having a conversation with Alexa and Eliana about how we support each other's social and emotional learning as much as we can. And also, how do we how do we keep the concept of learning at the top of our minds, especially with all the stuff that's going on in the world? You know what I mean? Like how do we prioritize these two things? So before this conversation begins, this video is brought to you by Unidos US, an organization that started in 1968 that serves the Hispanic community through research, policy analysis and influences state and national advocacy efforts as well as groundwork within under-resourced communities nationwide. I've worked with them before on, on, on a few different campaigns and so very happy to be jumping on with them again. So during the pandemic, I actually got a new job. I actually work with parents. I help parents be better parents. I'm in a classroom full of dads who are trying to find a way to reconnect with themselves, but also how to reintegrate with their families. And um, it's really interesting to see them navigate kind of the societal, the societal changes, right? Um, COVID and also just lack of access to the internet because a lot of the kids are gonna go back, they're, they're, they're going virtual, but a lot of them don't have access to the internet, right? So these questions come up in class, like how do I, how do I navigate this? How do I do that? And, and, and it, it's very stressful for some of these parents to, 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 to learn that it's not as easy as it used to be. And I have to ask myself, how many of the parents that I'm working with, how many of the parents in my community, how many of our Hispanic parents in general, all parents, are navigating these different ways of educating themselves, educating their children. And so I'm actually really curious to hear how Alexa has been dealing with that, with, with just the entire situation with anxiety and, and stress. <sighs> stress. Well, for once, dealing with stress because the pandemic sucked. And it sucked because it always made me feel like, oh my God, oh my God, I have to do this and do that. Oh, it just made me really frustrated all the time. And it like, stress, stresses you out. I was always like, Drumbling all over the place. I was always worrying too much. I was always kind of putting everything on me. So yeah, it sucked. Definitely not like having a teacher always there for you kind of really stressed me out. For example, I'm a really like in hands on like person, you know, I gotta really know what I'm doing. And being online completely made that disappear. Sometimes like the internet would stop working and I would be there, my zoom off and I'm over here like in a lecture and I wouldn't like, I wouldn't, oh my God, I would literally miss out on like whole lectures because like the internet would turn off or something like that. And then, you know, I could like go after like in person to school. Oh, you know, hey teacher, I have a problem with this. But with online learning, I only lasted like about an hour and 30 minutes. I never had the chance to talk to my teacher about any like real questions that I had. I'd have to email them and that by itself is a whole it's just the annoying whole, It issue. was inconvenient because like it, it was hard to reach everybody. Even for me as a parent, when she was like, her grades were kind of like, I was concerned about her grades. It was like hard to like communicate with the teachers. It was just like this really awkward space, you know, because there's a lot of demotivation coming from her and a lot of demotivation coming from the teachers. And, I, and that tells me as a parent, there's a lot of stress factors going on, right? You got stressed out teachers who are trying to figure out how to like protect themselves from the immune system because you got to go back to school in person. Some of those, even if they're vaccinated or not, you got students in the same situation um so i so that to me tells me that they are dealing with stuff now we have eliana in the building okay tell us about how you've been handling stress and anxiety at school at home i see you got yourself a new hairstyle talk, talk to me girl tell me um well how i deal with like stress is i guess like music mm -hmm. like um i listen to music i block out all the sounds because um, I like something I like to do, especially in public. I don't like crowds. I don't yeah. like people. Um, not that I like, like, I don't like, oh, I don't like them. I'm just like, I'm not really a big fan of crowds and just multiple bunches of people. Music, breathing, kind of. It breathing, kinda helps. breathing is good. Kind of helps though. Because it kind of like, it's like, like take a deep breath and you're just like, ah. What was going through your mind 
Uh, um, and how did you handle all that stuff? How did you handle overcoming all this, all these past couple of months, man? Well, honestly, I actually kind of enjoyed it. I don't like school and I just don't like going out. I did, I did. I mean, I did like talking to people. The whole line at school, actually yeah. no one online saw my face the whole year. I, I actually, I'm not kidding. I literally didn't put my camera on the whole year. She's definitely become more of an introvert. I'm not gonna lie. I put tape Big on there introvert. and I had to say that it was a glitch. I almost got caught like twice, but I didn't, thank God. I just prefer online because first of all, it glitches, the computer glitches. So sometimes you just, you know, scrolls just like it glitches, you know. Yeah. Um, but most of the fact that I don't like the loud noises and that there's like so many people and then like sometimes you even meet people and I'm just like, I don't know that person, do I say hi? Like, I don't know, it's kind of, it was kind of get hard to communicate after COVID hit, it was just started getting hard. It can, it, it can be, it can get hard. It's hard in general. It even is now. I don't understand how to make a conversation sometimes. But I'm it does tell like, me that at, at some point, I mean, you do have to have some sense of human interaction. You have to have that level of, hey, hey, nice to meet you. But you prefer kind of like, all right, I'll do my thing. Yeah, I like, I like, I, so sometimes I want to talk to someone. It's very like, different from your sister. I'm sure. like, I really like that outfit, but I'm not going to say anything because I don't know what to say. And, and Alexis says, and she's like, oh my God, you look so hot. I'm like, ah, that's what I wanted to say too. But I'm just like, I'm not. But I said it in my head. I said it in my head. That's, I don't, I don't like really, um, like yeah. say what I want to say. I'm just like, no, I'm good. I won't say that. I'll just keep it to myself. Very interesting tip. I think this, this one definitely is more for the introverts, you know, uh, for those of you who don't like being around people. Uh, I recommend you to, to, I challenge you to think about this. What is the difference between loneliness and solitude, right? Do you know the difference between loneliness and solitude? I do, actually. I do get lonely, too. I, well, most of the time, I'm just like, oops, I love me. I do the difference between solitude, solitude, yeah, solitude? Sorry. solitude and loneliness. Um, sometimes I do prefer to be away from people sometimes I'm just like you know I want to just have my own space right now which is all the time my mm -hmm. own space bubble I want no one to bother me just don't talk to me just let me like you know be in my own bubble and then sometimes it's like it's okay to be in your own bubble when you need to yeah but it's some, okay. and then sometimes you feel left out and sometimes you're just you like I want to talk to you but and you got to know the difference when you're like all right I'm doing it too much maybe it's time for me to step out of the house you know all right so let's actually talk about some ways that you can support your child's social and emotional learning. One way you can help your child's emotional learning is be aware of your child's emotions. Practice naming emotions, you know, and why they're feeling that way. Kind of like get in there with them, you know, why are you feeling sad? You can use things like venting if like, you know, maybe your child needs a place to vent, have them vent to you, you know, really learn about it. Or you can do like um, the highs and lows, for example. So in our family, we actually do this. We, we try our best to do our highs and lows of the week. Uh, a high of the week is something positive or a low of the week is something negative or something you're struggling with and just allowing our kids to have that space so they can have this conversation co have this conversation that's the key here yep. parents make that time available for your kids to talk to you okay don't let them bottleneck their emotions and then they have to process it somewhere somewhere else and and lord knows where that ends up all right second tip Number two tip is also practice reading like emotions in the room for example like you can use like subtitles you know like I like to watch a lot of foreign movies and shows and reading subtitles like kind of like helps me kind of understand definitely technically what the, they're saying. The plot of the story, yeah. what they're saying. And also what they're feeling. What Have they're you ever seen feeling. like little um I don't know what it's called. Is it like what are the little star things on the side yeah. that kinda of help you kinda of understand grunts. Yes. You know, it kinda of can tell you um, how characters are feeling and their emotions. Yes. And you can also kind of use this tip basically to just help them read emotions with themselves and as well as others. Mm -hmm. I think it's also a pretty fun tip too. Yeah. Is he mad? We've been watching subtitle movies for a long time and it helps us just understand the film better. But there's also a layer of a of, of fun practice that you could use to identify people's emotions in films, right? Okay, next set of tips focuses on educating your family to keep the concept of learning top of mind. Okay? Top of mind. So first tip, go. Having proper rest and diet. It's really important that you eat your breakfast in the morning and I have an issue with that, clearly. But it's really important that you make sure for you and your child to eat breakfast in the morning because a study, I mean, studies have been shown that a lot, I mean, even me too, yeah. Kids who don't eat breakfast in the morning have a really hard time at like really focusing throughout the day and getting their work done, especially in school. I'm an example of that. Sometimes when I skip breakfast because I'm not really feeling well, I notice and, you know, I'm like passed out in class or I won't pay attention. So it's really important that you have a good diet and always make sure that you're eating. 
Next little tip with that is also making sure that you're eating a lot of your fruits and vegetables. I know, you know what I mean? Not to sound like your PE teacher, but it's really important that you have a healthy diet. Yep, pizza's amazing. Burgers are amazing, fries are amazing, but it's really important that you balance that out. One of the things that I wanted to focus on y'all is is how you can support your social and emotional learning, right? In order to understand your, your, your child's social and emotional learning, you have to kind of understand how their personality is, right? Like, like realizing that Liana's more of an introvert and Alexa's more of an extrovert, and that really plays a role in the way that, the way that I have to kind of father them and the way that I have to help them kind of learn their emotional learning, right? So a few more things, guys, that I wanted to share. Um, another, another tip for you guys to, to enhance your, your children's emotional and social learning is uh, come up with new strategies. I'm going to read this. It says, uh, use tough situations as learning opportunities. Okay, talk about what your child can do when he or she's feeling a certain way or facing a challenge. You're in a soccer team. You got to face the challenge of working with another with a group of people who might not be listening like you or, or vice versa. You're not listening. And I think it's so important, you know, because been, she's been in a soccer team these past couple of uh, 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 months. And I, I, I know you picked up some stuff. You know, but that's so important. So how have you been like kind of like learning opportunities, tough situations in a soccer team? You know, how have you been handling that? It honestly gets really hard because sometimes like the team is very, sometimes I'm not going to be rude, but annoying. And, and like sometimes I can, you know, I can joke around too. Sometimes I don't pay attention either. And then I start to recognize, okay, I'm here to learn also because I want to be able to get better. And I try, but like sometimes they don't listen and I just go along. I'm just like, you know, okay, fine. I mean, if you want to do that, it's fine. And then we'll have to run laps. I'm like, okay, I'm just like, why? Especially in soccer games. I get really mad at soccer games. I, I'm not kidding. I have cussed at multiple people at uh, in the soccer games because I've gone, I literally wanted to start a fight no with a girl. No cussing. No cussing. But it's like, it was in Spanish, so she didn't no understand cussing. anyway, so... All right, so we're in our last couple of tips here, and we're going to be focusing more on on how to keep learning top of mind. Okay, so the first thing I want to share is learning top of mind has to do with also proper diet and exercise. Okay, so you like playing soccer. I see you shared playing soccer, um, but I want to encourage you all watching to encourage your kids to eat breakfast. Okay, number one, every day, whether at home or at school, children who are hungry have trouble listening to instructions and participating in school activities. And this is something that I have to remind Alexa and Liana about because sometimes they miss breakfast and they I go to school and they're like, oh, breakfast. no, I didn't have time. Like, yes, you did. Yes, you did. You have to wake up a little earlier. Final tip, ladies and gentlemen, is family time. Okay, I know I mentioned this previously with Alexa, but family time is really important. You know, and when we try to do some family time, we do our highs and lows. And that's family time. Or we watch movies or we go to the park or do something that we're all, we're all kind of together. The older we get... The, I notice as a parent, it's a little more difficult to get everybody in one place, especially because you got the 16-year-old dealing with something, you got you dealing with a bunch of other stuff. You got all these things going on, and uh, I think I want to recommend you all to really connect with your children's interests, connect with your children's um, dislikes and likes, and, and find a way to you know kind of meet them where they're at, you know. And I think that's 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 a, one of the biggest tips I can give you guys uh, that I've had to learn these past couple of uh, of months is. Is to really kind of slow down and pay attention to what's happening around me, because as a parent, I have been gone. Cr I've gone crazy since COVID started. I'm not gonna lie. We've had to pivot super fast. We've had to, I've had to adjust my work schedule. I've had to do a bunch of things, and it, and and sometimes we lose track of our li our literally lose track of our family because we're so focused on what's going on with with all the other things, you know. So so find time to connect with your kids, you know. And I'm telling you this as a facilitator. I'm telling you this as a as a fatherhood case manager, I'm telling you this as a father, I'm telling you this as a son, as a husband, um, as a cousin, as a cousin, as a neighbor, as, an uncle. as a stepbrother, <laughs> as a tío, as no, an owner. As, you know what I mean? Like that's the the key here is to find to make the effort to really learn so uh, learn what's going on around you and and be in tune with what, what's around you. All right, everybody. So before this video ends, I want to thank Unidos US for sponsoring this video and for helping us raise awareness about the importance of mental health and having a conversation about this i think it's it's it's, it's important you know not, not, our videos and, and and social media doesn't always have to be like quick funny funny videos they can be educational they can be inspirational and i really hope this video is is educational for you all hopefully inspirational and and, and really try your best to to father really try your best to mother really try your best to be there you know um and, and, and learn and pay attention to what's happening around you the world is changing a lot right now guys i'm not even kidding I'm not kidding. It's it's shifting. They call it the great, the great reset. You know, the great stir. It's like everybody's kind of being jumbled around and, and like you know I have a new job now. You know, it's like and so 
so what's what about you what is new in your life you know and how are you making all this work for you this 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 life that you have right now how are you going to make this work anyways guys thank you so much for watching don't forget to comment below how are you taking care of your mental health and don't forget to smash that like button and that's it thank you for watching have a wonderful day bye, bye.